Hey guys, the co-creator of Danganronpa F Shattered Hope wanted to continue the topic of Danganronpa tips, this time around focusing on production tips and how to edit a Fangan. Now these tips will include things like the UI, softwares and much more, so if that interests you, stick around and hopefully Morai Teru's tips will help. Number one, don't get discouraged. One of the most important things Moriteru's come to notice is how hard it is to edit a Fangan Rumpa. It is something you, as an editor, will need to be 100% dedicated to. Moriteru's advice is, if you are editing for someone else's Fangan, think about how much workload you will then have. How many Fangan Rumpas are you editing for? Even just one will take a very long time. That being said, if you are committed and want to edit but feel like you can't, or it is taking a long time, do not be discouraged. Editing an episode or chapter can take a very long time, weeks no less, for sure. However, know that each time you sit down and edit, you are making progress. It may feel like you're editing for hours for one scene that takes minutes. But, in the end, it will all add up. So just keep at it and keep going. Now, we'll talk later about things you can do to help this process. Number 2. Having a beta viewer will really help you. Whilst you may want to avoid sharing spoilers, having a trusted member of the team will really boost your overall spirit and will help give you advice. Find a beta viewer who is good at noticing mistakes and someone who is honest. You need to find someone who will tell you when something looks bad, looks wrong, spelt wrong. Not only that, having a beta viewer will certainly boost your spirits. Editing for hours can be taxing, so a beta viewer gives you good and honest feedback that will certainly lift up your spirits big time. Number 3. Don't feel pressured to make your fangan look like the games. One of Moriteru's biggest hurdles for creating the UI for Danganronpa F Shattered Hope was deciding how to go about the UI itself. Does she just make the same one as the game and recolor it? Does she just use the same shapes? In the end, the biggest advice Moriteru could offer is to be original. Remember, you are a fan series. You are in no pressure to recreate the same design as the games. As I said in my video, offer something unique, exciting. Remember that people who watch fangans are fans of the game. They probably want to see something unique and what you can bring to the table, not a recreation. Draw inspiration from other games if you need. An inspiration for the Deadly Life UI colors for F Shattered Hope was the 2018 film Into the Spider-Verse. The colours popped so well, and Morai Teru wanted that in our series. The daily UI is inspired by snow and ice. Now regardless, think of how your UI will tell its story. Do you need to show your audience which chapter is on the side of the screen? If so, why? Then how do you integrate that into the UI itself? The choice is completely yours. Number 4. So going more in-depth with colours and ideas for your UI, think about how you want to translate your themes through this UI. Imagine this, imagine you update an image of your UI or its thumbnail in your new skit video. Now how will someone who may not be versed in your fangan know what theme it has? How will the colours draw their attention? An example, F Shattered Hope uses an overall blue theme for the daily life. Not only is it reminiscent of ice and snow, but blue is known to be a calming colour. In contrast, Moritero uses yellows and pinks for daily life, big contrasting colours that stand out and look more unnatural compared to the daily life that the audience is used to. Think about these contrasting colours and how they work in your favour. Now if you don't have a theme, think about the aesthetics. Do you have a punk aesthetic with bright neon colours? Maybe a classy, elegant theme with delicate flower patterns? This is all your choice. 
Another example, going back to the idea of themes, is how it will draw or tell the audience what themes are going on. B3 had a comic theme, so the UI used a lot of half tones, the comic style backgrounds, etc. Again, F Shattered Hope has icicles, snowflakes, and blues to translate the idea of snow and ice. Another fangan Moriteru created UI for is Hushed Whispers, where she took the idea of their camp and created a tent-based UI. And the assets were made with the idea of using logs, like you were on a campsite. These characters may not see the UI, but the audience does, so you want the audience to feel like they are in that settlement too. It all translates to the bigger picture of how it gets the audience immersed. Number 5. Most Fangan Rampers will probably want to choose the V3 style of UI, where you can see the protagonist, but think about how it will be used when editing. Will it be more to edit? Is it needed, or can you do a style like Danganronpa 1 and 2, but show the protagonist like in Rebirth? There's no need to complicate things, especially if you feel like you aren't that experienced in editing. You may not realize it, but there are so many components to the UI that combine to make one. If you go for the V3 style, you may need to think about making a new text box for the protagonist alone. In V3, they change the pro tags boxes slightly whenever they are talking. This draws the audience's eye towards who is speaking. A name tag that sits and only changes the name alone won't be enough for the eye to instantly figure out who is speaking. So think about either making a new text box or having the name tag transition in a way that indicates to the eye that it's someone else who is speaking. A good way to think about this is if two characters, the protagonist and another character is on screen. Let's say the audio is off for you. You'll need the visual aid to help indicate who is speaking out of the two of them. The name tag is very small and sometimes hard to notice if it's changed, or if they are both labeled as question mark, question mark, question mark. How will you know who is who? Having that small transition or new text box will certainly help someone notice it visually. Number six, have some gameplay on in the background as you edit. Now, Moriteru stated earlier not to take too much inspiration from the games itself, but it is still a fangan based on the games. Having some of the charm of the game included will really help. It's better to have the games on to give you an idea of how things transition in or where sound effects should go. Now don't do this off the top of your head or you may miss something. If your fangan has characters leave the scene, do they leave like they do in V3, where the characters fade off in the main screen, but spins off in the backdrop screen? If so, how do V3 do it? It is better to learn about what they do before you break away from them. Number 7. Softwares have you thought about what softwares you want to use? Maybe you don't know which to use. Are you new to editing? One Moritero uses for Danganronpa F Shattered Hope is Adobe After Effects for both the daily life and deadly life. Since After Effects can handle 3D objects, can be used for animating, camera work, and effects stuff like the audio spectrum and other small details. If you are a beginner though, Moritero certainly recommends Sony Vegas. Whilst it may not have crazy features you can do, such as the audio spectrum, there's a lot that Sony Vegas can offer that's simple and easy to do. Moriteru especially recommends this if you are new to editing. Jumping straight into After Effects can be really challenging, and Sony Vegas is a nice choice when it comes to learning about general editing. However, that's mostly in regards to the daily life, daily life editing portion, not the 3D stuff. Moriteru already recommended After Effects, but you could also use other programs and other methods. Moritero also uses Photoshop and Illustration to make UIs, but you can certainly make them in certain other programs too. Number 8. Copyrights Although your fangan should be non-profit, you should still be careful of what to use. It's not recommended to go out and steal an image from Google and call it a day, because even if it's clearly not yours, it can be an issue with copyrights. If you aren't able to make your own backgrounds, you should think about finding a website that lets you use free-to-use objects 
backgrounds, etc. that can help you. Always, 100% always, make sure you state in the description or credits what isn't yours and what you've borrowed from websites. Just as you're working hard and probably don't want your stuff ripped off and uncredited, someone else doesn't want theirs either. If someone, say, a DeviantArt user has made UI and says you can use it but credit them, do that. Don't steal it. Make sure you're able to use it. All in all, Mori Teru's biggest and best advice that she can give you is this. Do what is comfortable for you. Now she knows it is tempting to want to go big or go home, but as good as that may sound, you need to know that it takes a lot of mental strength to do this because it takes so long and it feels like you're watching your edits over and over and over again just to get things right. Anyway, that's it for this video. Do let Mori Teru know if there's anything you guys want to see. Maybe she can make a tutorial on editing fangans, like how she uses the camera tools, animations, etc. Or how to make UI. Let her know if this helped or if there's anything else you want to see. Thank you for watching.